Hello students, welcome back to the biology class. So in the last class we started the chapter number 10 that is the microbes in the human welfare. We understood in the last class uh, regarding some of the welfares which are associated uh, into the human life and they happen because of the microbial activities. Uh, we learned that the microorganisms are omnipresent, they are present everywhere, they are ubiquitous in their distribution and they are even found at those sites uh, from uh, at which we don't expect life to exist for example uh, the there are areas where temperature may go as high as 100 degrees centigrade and deep inside the soil and then uh, there are uh, geysers inside the sea those areas are called as thermal vents in those area temperature may can exceed to 100 degrees centigrade in such environment and even in the snow uh, snow covered area where the snow may measure up to several meters in thickness and in highly acidic environment so there are microorganisms which are called as archaebacteria and archaebacteria we learned in the last class even in the 11th class that they are of three types thermoacidophile then we have the uh, methanogen and then we have the halophile so these microorganisms are able to survive in the extremist environment and they are the first one to exist on the earth so they first came up and then followed by the organisms which we see today so microbes are of diverse varieties around us and they all the many of them are disease causing that we'll be learning in the chapter number eight but uh, in this chapter we only deal with the good activities of microorganism then uh, we started the topic of uh, the household products which we obtain from the microorganism we learned that how microorganisms provide us dairy products so we learned about the importance of the lactic acid bacteria we learned some of the examples like lactobacillus acidophilus lactobacillus bulgaricus so we learned that these microorganisms they are responsible for generating acid and this acid coagulates the or you can say partially digests the pro milk protein and this causes the uh, this contributes to the nutritional benefit of consuming curd instead of milk and uh, curd also has vitamin B12 in it and then it also because the acid is there so that acid will also check the disease causing microorganisms growth in the elementary canal. So we learned these points in the last class. We learned that how dough rises and so many, uh, so many products we obtain especially South Indian foods and they all are because of fermentation by bacteria. We learned about toddy in the last class that it is a traditional drink in the southern parts of India and it is made with the help of the fermentation of the sap and that sap comes from the inflorescence and we remember in the 11th we have done inflorescence of the uh, palms is basically the uh, spedix. So uh, these, uh, these uh, microorganism cause the fermentation of the sap and sap turns into the liquid alcoholic drink called as toddy. We learned about the scientific names of those palm trees also. And then not just the toddy, we have fermented fish, soya bean, as well as fermented bamboo shoots. And we know that cheese has so many varieties world over. And we all know about the Swiss cheese, very common in the cartoons. And those that Swiss cheese has big holes because of the carbon dioxide gas produced by the bacterium named as Propionae bacterium shermanae. We learned in the last class that there are some fungus, uh, fungus treated uh, type of cheese also. For example, Roquefort cheese. I even told you Comembertai cheese. So these cheese are different in texture and in flavor. And the reason is that they are prepared with the help of different species of Penicillium fungi. So the difference between Swiss cheese and the uh, Roquefortai cheese is this one is prepared with the help of bacteria and Roquefort cheese is prepared with the help of penicillium. We learned that uh, there are industrial products also. Uh, this much we did in the last class if you remember that there are uh, there is bread production also. Saccharomyces cerevisia is the baker's yeast which is used in the baking. And we learned that there are single cell proteins also which we obtain from the microorganism. There are daily supplementary things available now for those who are diet conscious and they uh, consume a good amount of single cell proteins. We'll be learning about that later. 
Now, uh, then we uh, started the topic of microbes in the industrial products. So we talked about the alcoholic fermentation, that how yeast, that same yeast which is called as uh, baker's yeast, is also used in the fermentation and to prepare alcohol. That's why it is also called as the brewer's yeast. And we learned that there are various types of Saccharomyces species which are responsible for different flavor. Accordingly, wine yeast is different, sake yeast is different, and ginger beer yeast is also different. We learned that there are two types of uh, uh, alcoholic beverages, uh, distilled and non-distilled. We understood that the distilled one are those uh, which are concentrated one. Uh, so whiskey, brandy, rum, they all are distilled. They have higher percentage of alcohol in them. And we learned that the non-distilled one are just wine and beer and they are with less percentage of alcohol. Beer generally up to 8 to 9 percent and uh, wine can go up to 20 percent and there's lesser concentration of alcohol. That's why it is called as it is without distillation. Then we learned that uh, there are various procedures of uh, the alcohol formation batch process and continuous process. 